title is The Balls in Your Court. Let's play a game. Who am I? Okay, I have the number one show on daytime television. I'm a stand-up comic. I like to dance with my audience. I'm married to Portia de Rossi. Who am I? Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen DeGeneres. Excellent. Okay, next one. Who am I? I have an airport named after me. I have a library named after me. I'm known for saying let's win one for the Gipper, and I used to be president. Reagan. Who am I? Reagan. Excellent. All right, next one. Who am I? I, uh, I have so many Grammys that I can't even count them. I'm pregnant with twins right now, and I'm married <laughs> to Jay-Z. Who am I? Yeah. Excellent. You have already begun the conversation of the topic, who am I? As we continue the conversation, I hope we can talk about one, who am I? Two, the tyranny of now. And three, the power of three. Who am I? The tyranny of now and the power of three. When I was a kid in high school, we had these classes on self-esteem. Or really, they are classes on low self-esteem. <laughs> everything was blamed on low self-esteem. It was like if a teenage girl got pregnant, low self-esteem. If a guy got locked up in jail, low self-esteem. Bone got cut off, rent was due, you got a boil on your butt, low self-esteem. The problem was, with these classes, they never taught us who the self was that we were supposed to have esteem for. It's like you can't have self-esteem if you don't have a self. And you can't have a self if you don't know who you are. And why is it important to know who you are? Well, the language psychologists use, they say a person who doesn't know who they are is a person who lacks a sense of identity and a person who lacks a sense of self. And psychologists also go on to say if you lack a personal identity and lack a sense of self, it affects your career, your relationship, your emotional, your mental, and your physical health. Funny story about that is that I have an Aunt Florida. Y'all all know my Aunt Florida, believe me. She's a big black lady that's in church every Sunday, and she will sing a song that will have everybody shouting and falling down and peeling the paint off the walls. And every Sunday, Aunt Florida, she gets up and she testifies, and she'll do this testimony where she'll say, I am 63 years old, and I have never touched a drop of alcohol, and I have never done a drug. Praise Jesus. And everybody in the church will cheer and fall out. Aunt Florida is 5'2 and weighs 450 pounds. Clearly food is her drug. She has eaten more fried chicken than there is cocaine in Colombia. This woman does not realize who she is. And we all have that going on in our lives. We have those points where we don't know who we are, we have these little inconsistencies that, you know, we think, well, this doesn't really match up with who I said I was or who I thought I was. And I've been thinking about that, and I've been thinking, why is it that we have these? Why is it that we don't deal with these? And the answer actually became pretty simple, and the answer was, the tyranny of now. According to the 2015 Nielsen ratings, Americans spend 4.1 hours a day watching television. USA Today reports that we spend 41 minutes a day on Facebook. The American Business Statistics says there are over 205 billion emails going out each and every day worldwide. The average American office worker will receive 121 emails each and every day. 40% of us check our emails in bed. 30% of us admit to checking our emails in the bathroom. And if we've lost the ability to be proactive because we've become a country of being so <clears throat> reactive, it's like if everything's important, then nothing's important. If everything is urgent, then nothing's important. The tyranny of now, stop. <sighs> the power of three. One, sit, get quiet, and listen. The signs and the signals are all around us. If we just take a moment and listen, everything around us is telling us who we are and where we want to go. If you just listen to yourself, if you listen to what's going on around you, if you listen to the people around you,
you're giving you signals about who you are. Two, remember your dreams and dream big. I'm a senior program administrator. Nobody grows up thinking, I'm going to be a senior program administrator. <laughs> I have no child dreams that. And I started to go back to that, and I thought, OK, wait, what was the dream? And then I remembered what the dream was and thought about where I was. And it's like, OK, now I'm realizing how to use where I am now as a bridge to achieve that dream. And three, expand your comfort zone regularly. If you take the bus every day, take the train. If you drive every day, do a ride-sharing project. If you have pizza every Friday night, have Indian food. If you like movies, go to a baseball game. Do something different that shakes you up, that gets you out of where you are. Because it stimulates you and it activates your instincts. And when those instincts are activated, that's when you start to remember and realize the person you really are and the person you want it to be. And this has been a fun game. I mean, you led me on a game of who I am and the tyranny of now and the power of three. And we've played this game according to the cards for at least six minutes now. So <laughs> all I have left to say is now, ball's in your court. <laughs>